made out to the Astropad. Uh, there's already a bunch of people here. It's pretty cool. And uh, you can see uh, Sagittarius and the Milky Way looking pretty good. Uh, it's like right behind me there. Yeah, right there. There's the Galactic Center. So right now I'm headed out to Kissimmee Prairie uh, State Park. This is one of the darkest places that I could find in Florida. It's about three hours away from the Tampa area. I'm expected to arrive at about 9 p.m. It'll be right around when astronomical twilight starts, so it'll be pretty dark when I get there. I've never been there before, not super familiar with the area, but from what I understand, it's gonna be like a kind of wide open uh, prairie, and I should have like a pretty good view of the sky all the way around. Relatively dark skies, so hoping hoping to see uh, you know some really good Milky Way in there, and uh, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. On this trip, I'll be shooting with the newly announced 20mm and 24mm f1.4 DG DN art lenses from Sigma. According to Sigma, each of these lenses was designed with landscape astrophotography in mind, and both of them bear Sigma's top of the line art designation. Both are nearly identical in design, with the major difference being the larger 82mm front filter thread on the 20mm, while the 24mm has a smaller 72mm diameter filter thread. Both lens barrels are the same diameter until you get to the frontmost part of the 20mm, which is 15mm longer and has that larger flared out front to accommodate a larger element and a larger lens hood. One of the new features specifically targeted towards astrophotography is the new manual focus lock switch that allows you to manually focus and then lock the focus position of the lens. Focusing at night and maintaining focus can be one of the more challenging aspects of astrophotography, so it seems like this simple feature should be really useful. Alright, so I'm just driving into the park right now, um, and uh, it's interesting, the park, it actually closes at sundown, but if you reserve an astro pad or a campsite, then uh, they give you a code to get in the gate, and uh, yeah, it's, it's real dark here, it's pretty cool. Um, it just seems like I'm in the middle of nowhere, uh, which I, I basically am. Um, and. Yeah, it's pretty neat. There's, uh, I drove through some, some, uh, you know, some rain and thunderstorms on the way here, and I can see those storms off uh, just to my left here, um, just to the, just to the west. Should be, uh, should be a good spot. It's like super wide open. Like even, even in the really dark conditions right now, it's not like fully dark. It's still like nautical twilight right now. I can still see like all the way around, and you know, see the horizon all the way around. And uh, it just looks, you know, really, really cool. Um, I think that the moon rises uh, sometime after midnight, um, so I want to be able to at least shoot kind of through that. Um, maybe get a little bit of uh, moonrise, um, you know, kind of blue, moon blue hour, if you will, um, in there. And, uh, you know, just have a good night of shooting. All right, I made it out to the Astro Pad. Uh, there's already a bunch of people here. It's pretty cool. And... Uh, you can see uh, Sagittarius and the Milky Way looking pretty good. Uh, it's like right behind me there. Yeah, right there. There's the Galactic Center. Um, so yeah, uh, time to get shooting. So like I said, I want to shoot with the 24 first and uh, see how that see how that lens uh, does. Um, so pretty excited to be out here and uh, especially being around other people who are doing the same thing. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, pardon my grainy video. Um, I don't have a second body to shoot video with, so I'm gonna switch in between my camera and my phone. Um, I met a guy here named Chris. He's out shooting astrophotos as well. Um, he's got, he's shooting with a, like a wide angle 14 mil, doing what, you know, super wide angle stuff as well. Um, and uh, we're just out on the astro pad, and I uh, figured it'd be fun to shoot some uh, silhouette portraits, so Chris uh, was nice to volunteer and 
to be my subject, so uh, we're kind of setting up here. Um, I'll show you my monitor um, and uh, kind of show you the shot that I'm putting together. All right, so here's the back of the A7C. Um, you can see Chris is getting set up there. We've got the Galactic Center fully visible. He's got his camera uh, pointed over there. And uh, so I'm gonna just shoot, shoot some portraits of him. Uh, yeah, so that's the shot. Uh, let's get shooting. All right, let's take a look at some raw photos to evaluate the aberration performance of these lenses wide open at f1.4. For the 20 mil, the center is super sharp, just as we would expect. And when we take a look at the corners, they're just as sharp. There's absolutely no visible aberrations, which is downright exceptional for a lens like this. Now let's take a look at the 24 millimeter. The center is sharp as expected and going out to the corners, it's still very sharp, but there's just a tiny bit of visible astigmatism that's just barely deforming the stars. For a 24 millimeter f1.4, it's still a very, very good performer, but between these two lenses, I definitely give the edge to the Sigma 20 millimeter. After taking some initial shots of Chris with the 24 millimeter, I set up on the Astro pad and started shooting again with the 20 millimeter f1.4. The astro pads at Kissimmee Prairie Preserve are out in a wide open area with no trees, but there's a lot of vegetation that made for a decent foreground. For most of my initial shots, I shot time-lapse stacks, which allowed me to create two different results. A noise-reduced, aligned, and median stack result, and a star trails stack using a light and blend mode. After midnight, I set up for what I thought would be my final composition for the night, capturing a time lapse of about 120 frames of the rising crescent moon. Even though the moon was only about 30% illuminated, it still lit up the sky blue like the rising sun. In addition to the moon, we can see Mars, Jupiter, the Andromeda galaxy, and even the Triangulum galaxy. Here's all 50 minutes of my moonrise time lapse stacked into star trails. All right, so after I started my uh, time lapse for getting the moonrise, um, I thought I was going to call it a night, but um, figured, you know, I'm out here, I should take the opportunity, keep shooting. Plus, the light from the moon was just really, really cool. So. Um, I grabbed the camera, um, had the 20 mil on, which is what I'm shooting uh, this with right now, and I just sort of walked around. I walked around the grounds of uh, the area around the campground here, and uh, uh, just shot a bunch of bunch of different compositions. Um, pretty happy with them. The light from the moon is pretty interesting. You can still see the Milky Way, you know. So we're getting a little bit of color in the sky, and uh, you know, just kind of really neat, really really neat conditions. You can see the moon there behind me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's just, uh, kind of a really cool, you know, super late night here. Um, I just set the focus on the, on the 20 mil to infinity and locked it down with the focus lock and, uh, just ran with it. Um, so, uh, yeah, really good night shooting, um. I think the 20 mil uh, f1.4 is definitely a winner. This is my—it's my favorite of the two lenses. Um, I think even the trade-off of like having the little bit of extra weight, um, just because it's a slightly larger lens, um, I think is worth it. You know, at least in, in the, the the short experience that I had with it and the 24, I think the 20 um, is my favorite of the two. Um, the little bit of extra uh, field of view is is really nice. Like. Even with, you know, having like an ultra wide, like a 20 mil, um, I, I still shot a few panoramas, you know, I still shot a few like 
several frame panoramas in order to try and you know get like a slightly larger field of view. Um, so it's it's nice if if you have a little bit of extra there. Um, you, you know you don't have to shoot as many frames or um, you know you're 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 starting off wider if if, if your goal is to shoot uh, something really really wide angle like that. So I think I think I should call it because I, I need to get some sleep before uh, I drive back home in the morning and. Uh, but just the conditions here are just so amazing and, and the light is awesome with the moon and the Milky Way and, and you know, all of it, it's just been really, really cool. The um, moon's bright enough that I haven't even needed a, a flashlight at all to, to navigate around. Yeah, I don't know, this is a really, really neat spot. I'm really happy that I came out here. Yeah, so uh, thanks so much for joining me on this video. I, uh, I really enjoyed uh, being able to use these lenses. Um, thank you so much to Sigma for reaching out to me and sending me these uh, lenses to try out. Um, I'll be sad to have to send them back at the end of the month, um, but I, I definitely really, really enjoyed uh, shooting with them. And you know, I think both of them are really great lenses. The 20 mil is is something special for sure. I definitely think that the 20 mil is uh, is a lens, you know that I would want in my bag uh, pretty much perpetually. It's the widest angle f1.4 lens that you can get for, for uh, mirrorless cameras. And, um, you know, I, I think that, that that says something. I mean, it, it's, it's already the extreme of the specification and it, it's, its performance is, is there to match as well. So. so yeah, I think I'm gonna finally call it a night. So thanks so much for joining and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Check out more of our gear reviews, tutorials, and inspiration on LonelySpec.com. Good night.